Kansas held a referendum on a change to the state constitution uh, that, that would have nulled abortion protections, essentially. Um, the referendum was worded in such a way that a yes would have weakened abortion rights and a no would have protected abortion rights. And despite the fact that Kansas is, to be clear, a very, very rural and very, very right-leaning state, the results of the constitutional referendum were, like, shockingly good. A state that backed Donald Trump by 15 points, 15 points, and hasn't voted for a Democratic presidential candidate since Lyndon B. Johnson, uh, a.k.a. Secretary of Racism, a.k.a. Big Dick Haver, more than 900,000 people cast ballots on the proposed constitutional amendment. That is over 25% more votes than were cast in the primaries for the Republican and Democrat Senate. That is massive. More people came out for this specifically than they did for the actual primaries of their respective, like, yeah. And it's about two thirds the number of votes cast in the presidential election. Most Americans do not get out of bed for anything other than the presidential. Having this many people come out for a constitutional referendum for the state is such a big deal. Of particular note is that in every single county, the results in the amendment graph were to the left of the 2020 results. There are 14 counties, home to nearly a third of the state's population, that backed Trump in 2020 and voted against the proposed amendment. Those counties backed Trump by 20 points and no by 13 points. Look at this right here. The larger the dot, the more, um, uh, see, bl dark pink is suburban, light pink is uh, metro, and uh, orange is rural. And this line right here, if they're to the left of it, means they were more against the re constitutional referendum than they were in favor of Trump. And all of them were. Every county, even the tiny rural ones that were like 99% in support of Trump up here, even these counties were more to the left on the abortion issue. Which is exceptional. Now, obviously, the most uh, Biden-supporting and most pro choice areas are the larger uh, counties, of course. You have all these tiny little small counties here, but yeah. In counties that voted for the proposed amendment, no got about 15% more raw votes did than Joe Biden got. Yes got fewer than half the votes Trump did. God, that is insane. An overwhelming victory. Um, yeah, so here's the thing, guys. This reveals... So, okay, first of all, I want to talk about what a colossal optical victory this is for the left, okay? A massive victory, you know? The fact that Kansas, which is a very red state, you know, would come out this in favor of abortion rights is an indication that Republicans are not legislating based off the will of the people. Now, we know that based on um, polling data that we have. Polling data shows us that most Americans are in favor of maintaining Roe v. Wade, even though the Republican Party wants to get rid of it. That's the case even in a lot of red states. But this isn't just polling. This is the result of a constitutional referendum that included nearly a million votes in a deep red state. And what did we get? Overwhelming in favor of abortion rights results. And this right here, this is such a strong indicator. You get this every once in a while in the affirmative, where like Florida will vote red, but also vote for a higher minimum wage in the state. You get the opposite of this, where they'll vote red, but then they'll also support like progressive policy in the affirmative, you know. But in this case, this is more of a rejection of the policy of the candidates they voted for. What goes on in the mind of the conservative who votes to protect abortion rights, but also voted for Trump? Lots of stuff, I imagine, or perhaps very little. This is why we need to continue to proselytize to rural areas. You cannot give up on a state just because it's red. And you have to point out to all Republicans, like, your legislation isn't popular. Why are you voting for candidates whose bastions are rejecting the primary policies that they're fighting for. It is insane. Massive victory. Huge, huge, huge victory. Oh, there were some uh, sneaky efforts on the part of some of the uh, anti-abortion types. I think, uh, weren't, weren't there people who were text banking saying like, you want to defend abortion, don't you? Vote yes on the referendum, right? There were some people who were trying to trick others. 
didn't work. I mean, it didn't come out. They did that for sure. Well, very, very pro-democracy people, those types. Oklahoma has um, similar numbers for abortion support as Canvas, or as Kansas does. Yeah, it's stuff like this, you know? Keep in mind, man, there is something that really hurts Republicans in the general electoral sense. And it's the fact that no matter how ideologically biased you may be, being the victim of Republican policies makes your life worse. That's something that really makes, uh, you know, electoral business a lot easier for us than for them. Uh, their policies make things shitty. <laughs> and as a product of that, you know, there are going to be schisms between who people vote for because they all watch Fox News or they're terrified of Dems or whatever, and what policies they're actually willing to support. And we need to exploit those schisms. Yeah, here's an example of one of those fake tweets. Oh, this is the one I liked. Okay, so this is the one that I saw. Women in Kansas are losing their choice. Vote yes to give women a choice. See? So it's like a fake, you know, it's like, like, haha, we'll get you, you know. Great stuff. Well, of course, it's a bot message, you know, mass text banking. Um, it's nice. And you know what? Honest to God, it makes me want to see a lot more referendums around the country. I have a feeling that if left to referendum, a lot more issues would be, um, would, would be uh, you know, favorably decided. I know that in California, we have kind of a bad record of this because every time a referendum is held on anything involving housing policy, all of the homeowners get together and spend $8.6 trillion on making sure that the entire state is blanketed with advertisements, convincing everyone that actually uh, the world will explode unless you make sure that you, uh, you know, house, you know, house taxes aren't updated to the current property value or some bullshit, you know, fucking NIMBY. Yeah, 22, 30. They've done this a bunch of times, you know, but there are a lot of issues that I do think could could be put effectively to referendum. California just passed SB 107 that allows trans people from other states to come here for gender affirming care. Oh, every once in a while you get a W, I guess, even in Cali. SB 107, California Senate bill. This isn't a referendum, it's a Senate bill, but um, yeah. Um, U.S. Constitution, blah, blah, blah. The bill would prohibit the enforcement of an order based on another state's law authorizing a child to be removed from their parent or guardian based on the parent or guardian allowing their child to receive gender affirming health care. Basically, isn't this like Marbury versus Madison? Wait, is that the right one? I always get them mixed up. What was the one where the other where it was the argument for whether or not other states would have to give back slaves that escaped from the slave states? I, I always forget. It wasn't Marbury versus Madison. It was another one. Wasn't Dred Scott? Dred oh fuck, I forget. Why am I so bad at this? Dred Dred Scott. Yeah, the fugitive slave law. Basically, it's like that. Um, except the good guys won this time. California is saying, hey, the, another state is saying that you'll be separated from your parents if you're a kid and you get gender affirming care. Well, we say fuck that. Florida also voted for felon voting and passed it in 2018, but the state government is literally ignoring it and arresting felons for illegally voting. Damn, that's crazy. That should, people should be lined up against the wall for that. I guess that's the DeSantis reality. I mean, you can literally like legalize felon voting, but if they don't want to, they'll just not do it. Florida implemented a poll tax. Yeah. Florida's so right-wing. The crazy thing is, Florida is not that right-wing. It's just, like, in terms of the proportion of the state, there are plenty of states more right-wing than Florida. Florida just happens to be, like, the epicenter of, like, the worst right-wing state government, you know? It's, it's like, the amount of right-wing in the state is enough for the state to be right-wing, and that particular right-wing just happens to be insane. Um, yeah, it was a swing state for a while, you know, till, till Trump. It's just DeSantis has really cracked down. DeSantis is, um, DeSantis is a monster. He'll see, he'll see you all to the death camps. Remember when DeSantis swatted a COVID scientist for reporting data in COVID? He's done so much monstrous shit. Literally, like, um, the state bill giving legal protection to people driving over protesters passed during the Black Lives Matter protests. Like, oh yeah, okay, you legally have a right to protest. Well, I legally have a right to not incarcerate people for driving over black people. Now, he is the Antichrist. Yeah, he is. Actually a demon. Used to have a friend who celebrated that. Used to being the operative uh, from there. All right. Um, yeah, look, okay, doomering about Florida aside, this, the results from Kansas are really good. Like, I want to be, be clear about that. 
Like, it's not just some hollow victory or whatever. It's not even just about the results in Kansas itself. It is a fundamentally a populist rejection of party logic in the GOP. It is a reaffirmation that their obsessive, uh, moronic, authoritarian attitudes on abortion, on forced birth, are so unpopular that even their bastions will vote overwhelmingly against it. You know, that's what we're talking about here. And that's a damn, damn good thing, in my opinion. Are we sure they weren't just too inbred to read the ballot properly? They might have been too inbred to read the ballot properly. Oh, and because I haven't, um, and because I haven't uh, filmed the little ad bit that we're going to roll, if you want to make a difference in your local area, remember that I am literally working with a group of electoral professionals, campaign advisors, and organizers uh, who are taking the teeming mass of Vauchites and turning them into warriors for Biden or, you know, good things in general. Uh, this map represents not only people who have joined up with the Discord and filled out the form, but people who have committed to local canvassing, phone banking, text banking operations. There are thousands of people in the Discord. What, five, six thousand? When this started, they thought we would have 2K people in Discord by November. We hit 2K in two days. Now we've just about tripled it, okay? You guys are the goddamn vanguard, the good kind, the powerful warriors of the proletariat. Already I'm seeing people saying, you know, oh, we were getting lessons on how to canvas. Oh, I met up with people here and there, you know. Oh, I'm learning how to do this. I'm learning how to do that. I've already made a friend, you know. People are already making friends. I'm serious. Bosch.gg slash map. Join up with the Discord. A lot of cool people there. Real cool, okay? Real cool.